in my business page. All right, so I'm, I think we should be live now. Um, okay. Anyone who is, no one's watching it, thank God. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they'll watch it later on yes, tape. Yes, that's, that's true. That's true. I should be careful what I say. <laughs> that's right. Um, okay, I need to adjust this because I'm off center. And cool. I should go over here. And then, okay, so are we live? I think we are live streaming right oh, now. Oh, I see us. I see us live. Okay, good. And there. Good. There, and I got rid of the audio on it. All right. And, and I see me. And how is my sound? Is it okay? Ooh, wait, let me check the sound on oh, the one Facebook. Person watching. Yay, we have someone watching. Whoever's watching, thank you. Oh, four people. Thank you for helping us um, test this. This is, Kevin, this is Kevin Sylvester, my friend Kevin Sylvester, who is an awesome um, picture book, middle grade author, illustrator. And he's so good because I said, I'm going to try live, st a live streaming with a guest. Well, it could be a complete embarrassing failure. Are you willing to try it with me? And he said, sure. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Complete embarrassing failures. That's that's how I've built a career, Debbie. So. <laughs> oh, and we got a thumbs up, and hopefully. Oh. So, Kevin, are you able to see, what like? What's okay? I could see on my second monitor, so hopefully you can see. So, um, and your video. Okay, for a second I thought you were frozen, but then I saw you. You're just laughing at me. That's why. I'm just laughing. I'm looking, and I'm looking down at how it's appearing on Facebook, which is like a view into the past because there's a bit of a delay. Right. Oh, that's right. And, and I'm also, looking at us. So anyone who's watching, we are trying, like, our goal is to eventually we want to make more art together. I want to have other illustrators on. I think I can have up to four guests or three guests or something. But awesome. right now we're just looking for an excuse to um, make art. So if you, in your comments, can you people comment on a live stream in Facebook? If yeah. you can, and I know there's a delay of 20, 25 seconds, tell us what to draw. Like something simple, please. Um, yeah. And we're going to try it and we'll see how this works. So, oh, you know what? I have to. And I'll say that part of the reason I said yes, first of all, you're awesome. So I'm always fun. I always have fun chatting with you, even if we don't draw. But also, I, I, I am always fascinated to see how other artists draw, like, even something as simple as how your hand moves, that looks different from let's say the way my hand moves when we're drawing. Uh, you and I have done like cartooning battles oh, and stuff. Those are fun. And <laughs> they are fun because I, I want to watch you draw instead of drawing. But it's, <laughs> it's always interesting to see how we tackle the same challenge in a completely different way so that's another re i would love to see i totally other agree people and like I, I also like this sort of I, I like seeing how other people work other illustrators work and also i want to help show young creators there's no one right way 100 yeah to illustrate something there's all different ways all different methods oh we're getting lots of comments um oh, great let's see so oh my agent <laughs> Ginger nice. Nolan at Curtis Brown. Hi, Ginger. Says a seashell. Um, there's also a Paul Hankins asked to draw the last day of school. Eileen says draw a camel. Um, Riley says squirrel. Ooh, squirrel. <laughs> that might be fun, actually. I, you, if I angle my computer, actually, you'll see I have an original Debbie squirrel up here. Well, it's one of your where are my books bookmarks. But you and I share stories of oh, crazy squirrels sometimes. Oh, can't quite see it in the crop, the crop It's sort of up there. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> so would you, and, oh, and Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Zonder also asked for a squirrel. You want to try drawing a squirrel? Uh, let's draw a squirrel. How about we do what we draw a squirrel with a seashell to its ear on the last day of school. <laughs> That's a great idea. Okay, so I'm going to switch my scene and you're going to switch your camera. Let's see. Yep. I'm so you see. should see my drawing tablet now because right. that's the easiest way for me to draw. This is fun. Oh my gosh. This is great. Okay, squirrel. And you know what? I'm going to have help. I'm using some celery that's kind of, uh, getting kind of limp in my, you know what? I'm going to use some celery. Because I like drawing with found objects. Oh, I love watching you found objects and your crayon stuff too. It's all awesome. So one of the, like one of our goals is to show kids that there are all different ways to draw things. And if also, no matter what age you are, 
everyone can draw. If you want to make art along with us, and feel free to post your art in your in the comments afterward to see. Oh, that would be awesome. And and I know I, I've been doing a lot of virtual school visits, which which I'm super happy about lately. Um, and what's amazing is that I think the kids are hungry for kind of drawing uh, tutorials and stuff because I, I'm a visual learner. Yeah. And I just know that, especially when everything is so virtual right now, I find it way easier to figure out what's going on if I can see it and if I can draw it. Me that too. just helps me figure out concepts and things like that. There's my cock shell. There's my squirrel. Yeah. Oh, that, I love I, your, I can watch what you're doing. I, can, I can't because I'll get distracted. Right. I know, and then I gotta watch what you're doing <laughs> and then I'll get distracted. This is a concerned squirrel. The squirrel is trying to take over. I don't know how you feel about squirrels, uh, Kevin. I have but a. I find squirrels a little bit naughty. I have a love-hate relationship with them. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I I have to admit I I'm a lo I love birds, so I have a bird feeder in my backyard, and it's a squirrel feeder. Let's let's be honest. <laughs> Yeah. And so, uh, but it doesn't matter what I do, they get into the bird feeder. And I have to admit, like, that is incredible. Like, they, they're just smart. They're smarter than humans. I think and so, so I too. And so I feel like I have to give them credit. In fact, I think... I'm going to use some almonds somehow. How should I use these almonds? I'm I, some and I should mention that if anyone's watching now, what I tend to do... When I'm, especially when I'm doodling a concept, is I'm not very careful. Uh, I, I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm a messy drawer. Uh, I'll say it. I'm a messy drawer. So when I'm drawing, I'm not too careful. I make a dozen million mistakes. I guess I just don't consider them mistakes because they help me figure out how to draw other stuff. So you can see that I laid down a kind of a messy squirrel and now I'm going back over it to figure out the lines that I want to keep and I tend to draw with shapes so if you look at it it's actually just a couple of shapes that I'm adding detail on top of color should I make my, I'm gonna make my squirrel blue nice it's an alien squirrel aren't they all <laughs> I have had well we have had squirrels cut off our internet I mean, I'm I'm hoping not on purpose. Um, but I, you know, I have to wonder. They've cut off our internet. They have um, moved into my office and moved into like in the walls. I could hear it, and it's really disturbing when you're working. I'm trying to work and I hear it chewing on something. Oh that's, wow! Yeah, I've had that. That's not to. So, case. Adult artists out there, one of my favorite sketching things is the Pentel pocket brush, um, but I also crayons because I just love crayons so much. I'm always amazed at what you do with crayons. <laughs> well, I, I love crayons because um, I appreciate you saying that. But I, I love crayons because partly because when I use, ex I have some more expensive art. Oh, I need more colors. Um, I have more expensive art materials but I'm always self-conscious about using them because I'm thinking oh it's such a waste I should save these more expensive art materials until I know I'm going to be working on something important but then I found out I never really worked on those things because I was too self-conscious about using them so now I'm using ink tents ink tents which are water soluble what are your favorite types of materi materials to work with, Kevin? They, they honestly, they change all the time. And sometimes they'll change book by book. So when I did all the illustrations for the Neil Flambe series, yeah. um, I did them all on Bristol board with a three, number three nib mechanical pencil, like a Stadler, uh, um, oh, what the heck do they call them? Not a rapidograph, but like a Stadler um, mechanical pen. Right. 
Right. Uh, and, I, and I just, I love that line. I still love that line. And I use that one a lot. Uh, and then, um, but then I find as I, I've done other books, uh, I did my picture book Splinters completely in watercolor. I did uh, the Gargantua Jr., uh, the book that's uh, down there in the corner. Oh, I, uh, I did. So thank you very much. I love that one, too. Uh, and uh, it, I did that in, a, in tracing paper, pencil. Then I scanned that in, and I did all of the uh, coloring and post-editing on, um, on my computer. So, oh. and then I'm also, I got another series coming out. Next year, and, I, and I've rediscovered the love of mechanical pencils. Oh. So I've been doing all of my sketches in pencil and then scanning them in and just adding shading because it's a black and white. I also decided I didn't like that squirrel, so I'm doing another squirrel. How long does it take you to do one of your illustrations? The ones in Gargantua would take a little, I would say, I mean, oh, at least a week each. Um, and that's before I got approval from <clears throat> from the art director at Groundwood, Michael Solomon, because I would need to make sure that the scale was correct. You know, you're drawing a giant Godzilla-sized monster and her baby. You have to make sure that the scale of that is correct in every picture and consistent and that the character design is consistent. And I tend to doodle. I don't tend to structure myself very well so i had to go back and redo a bunch of them even after they'd been in my head mostly done which is fine that, that's great you want you want the book to be perfect so, so you, you must know what that's like when you're designing a character yeah you pro you go through like how many characters a for gerpel and three how many times did you draw each character before you established exactly what you wanted them to look like oh it depends on the project like for Sea Monkey and Bob. Sea mm -hmm. Monkey and Bob. Here I heard there is there is Bob and there is Sea Monkey. I worked on character I can't I lost count. Um, maybe <laughs> over a hundred times and over the course of a year trying to get the character right. But then there's other ones like the potato. The potato I I actually went to the grocery, the potato and I'm bored and I'm sad and I'm worried. Yeah. Um, I went to the grocery store and I got potatoes and then I started um, trying different types of potatoes. I guess it depends on the character. And also a lot of times I just want to have fun with it because as you know, once you settle on a character, then you're locked into how you create that character. Yeah. I'm making two celery squirrels having an argument about something. I'm not sure what. Are there any young writers out there who have an idea about what they should be arguing about? Please let me know. Oh, nice. So I have to switch over to Facebook. Just a technical thing. I can't see that on my Skype screen now. Oh, you can't? Uh, just, which is cool. If you're listening out there, Debbie and I are working out the tech stuff on this. But if I go to the Facebook feed, I see exactly what you're drawing. Oh, okay. So, just FYI, totally cute. Yeah, because and the funny this is an experiment. Um, we we're we were trying to, uh, you know, I'm gonna put a little heart there because the minute I add a heart, it adds like, what what's going on? Are they in love or or maybe this is um, a parent? And but then with the heart there, why is this girl looking worried? I just love adding things to um, a drawing that make me add, ask questions. So how is your, yeah. your tech going? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, I love your squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's me. As soon as I added the glasses, I think it looks a little bit like me. It does. Except Bemused and holding an acorn. That's the story <laughs> of my life. Is that squirrel, um, uh, is that squirrel wearing a tie? Yes. Oh, I've never, you know what? I've never seen you wearing a tie. Uh, and you never will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have a couple and I've, I've worn them when I like MC awards, banquets and stuff. But, um, but no, I'm not a huge fan of, I wish I were, I wish I were more sartorial. <laughs> I am not. Look up sartorial kids. It's a good word. <laughs> 
I'm adding a, a little carrot. I'm not sure what this is going to be. It's cool, though. Like, one of the things, I, when you talk about uh, adding the heart, I think one of the things that, again, kids would probably find interesting is that, I and I think you might agree with me on this, so much of drawing is drawing, reacting to what you drew, and then going, oh, maybe I could have done it this way. And then you change it as you draw. There's so many incremental decisions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's never, never finished. For example, this squirrel, I'm going to make an alien squirrel. Because if I make it an alien squirrel, the squirrel can be anything. So this squirrel is going to have a whole bunch of arms. It's like an insect so like, squirrel. Sort of. Nice. Imagine what a squirrel could do with all those arms. See, and then uh, uh, as I'm drawing this, I was, I was like, well, I was going to make like a squirrel in water. I don't know why. And then I thought, wait, Godzilla. I'm going to do Squirrelzilla. So I'm actually going to start over, and I'm going to do a giant evil squirrel. So I'm reading uh, comments, and Caitlin says my audio is quiet. So I'm going to turn up my audio a little bit. But okay. let me know if my audio gets too loud, okay? Because when Kevin and I were testing, Kevin mentioned that I was too loud. Or maybe he just doesn't like the sound of my voice. <laughs> I love the sound of your voice. I think it was probably, it could have been also that the settings on my, uh, my audio speakers were too hot or something too. So. Oh, I see. Oh, I, I like your scroll, what you're doing. Um, and... <laughs> Michelle asks what program you're using for your art right now, Kevin. Uh, right now on this, I am using Photoshop on my uh, Wacom tablet. Uh, and then, but I've been doing a lot of drawing on um, Procreate on my iPad. Uh, I, f I found a way to set up the pencil brush so that it's very much like an actual pencil. And I just love the feel of it. Oh. Um, I'm realizing I totally forgot to add a seashell and the last day of school. <laughs> I, I moved past that. I, unless this is a squirrel. I'm okay, I'm past that too. Because I'm thinking, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Although, this is a... So, I'm, I'm reading, actually reading comments. So, did you know Caitlin's yet? Oh! Mouse. Caitlin's story asked for a mouse. I'm going to draw a mouse. Nice. I was using nuts because that's pretty appropriate. Okay, and I'm going to ah. zoom in because this mouse is going to be pretty small because of the nuts. I like what you're doing, Kevin. Well, now I'm going to draw a drawn mouse. I sort of say squirrels is sort of like giant rats. <laughs> I so. agree. I totally agree. What was I drawing? Oh, yeah, mouse. I get so easily distracted. There. Mouse. There, I'll draw. A mouse, and then the squirrel realizes that the mouse is coming to attack it. They're having a Godzilla and mouse battle. My mouse is going to be running because someone wants to eat its ears, which are made of nuts. <laughs> well, actually, I want. To, I'm hungry. <laughs> I want to yeah. eat the ears. Oh, you know what? I, this could be. A girl's dress, maybe. You know, I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this here. I'm drawing all kinds of stuff. So what are you working on now, Kevin? Uh, I am working on a couple different books. Uh, my kid Basil and I uh, have a book coming out next year that we wrote together. Um, called The Fabulous Zed Watson. Oh, that's a great title. I know, that's about Baz. Trust me, that's all Baz. And the, it's about a uh, non-binary kid and named Zed. And uh, their sort of schoolmate uh, who may or may not become a friend named Gabe. And they go on a search across the country the United States and Canada, looking for a book that was buried by the author because the reception for it was so horrible that the author buried it. 
Oh no. Along, along with the money they got paid for it, and it's all buried somewhere, and they left clues on how to find it. And so Zed and Gabe set out in search of this book. That sounds great. Now, has it got a contract yet or no? Oh, it's coming up from HarperCollins oh. next year. Oh, yeah. fantastic. I know. I'm super excited by that one. And then I also have a new series that's starting with Scholastic this fall, which is about six. I like. I love comic books. That's the only thing I read as a kid. I have a degree in English literature. I like to point that out. I didn't so, know that, really. Yeah, so if you're only reading Dogman, kids, just keep reading Dogman. I love Dogman, as you know. Um, and so for me, uh, I love superheroes. And so we did one, uh, Ted Staunton, Richard Scrimger, and Leslie Livingston, and Britt Wilson did the art. And I did a superhero series for Scholastic. And I have a new one coming out, and that was called The Almost Epic Squad. And oh, then I have yeah. a new one coming out where six hockey-loving kids get zapped with radiation. That's and they become super hockey players. In fact, I'll show you a little bit of what they look like. I can do that. And again, if you're watching, you will notice that I'm always sort of laying down rough shapes first. And what are you working on? Um, I am working on a sequel to Sam and Eva. And I'm also very, very excited about the upcoming launch of Gurpal and Preena Broken Crayon Cosmic Adventure. Wait, can I awesome. zoom out? There, which is written by Linda Sue Park and illustrated by me. It's coming up from Simon Schuster, August 25th. I bet I moved some of my art now. Oh, no, no, it's okay. So I'm very excited about that. But right now I'm in the, for Sam and Eva, let's see, here's Sam and Eva. So I'm working on the sequel to this. Um, with Simon Schuster, and we're just in the, the writing part. I'm working with my editor, Justin Chanda, and he's helping me work out um, some of the ideas. Um, and everyone, there's, there's some people out there who think that picture books are easy to write, but uh. oh, they're so hard to write because there's so few words, so every single word means so much. So right Agreed. now I'm I'm trying to find the right words. What can I turn this into? Let's see. Agreed. What's the what's the launch date for Gurple and Crane? August twenty fifth. And originally awesome. I was supposed to do an in person book tour, but I'm not sure. I suspect it's gonna go virtual. So I, I I have to admit, uh, if we're taking climate change seriously, I am actually really enjoying a lot of the virtual school visits and stuff and presentations there. I know they're not the same, but some of them are just a blast. I've been watching a ton online. I sort of sit online a lot while I'm drawing and I watch uh, like uh, Kathleen Marshall from um, Anderson's in Naperville or Madison from Little Shop of Stories down in Decatur. And they're just, they're finding ways to make it super entertaining. And I'm kind of like, yeah, this maybe this is the future. Like, yeah, and and also know? that's true because also for virtual visits, uh, virtual events, more people can attend from around the world. That, that's true too. Yes. I'm making a cat. I like drawing cats. Cool. So this is Mo from my book. He and he's one of the kids, oh. and they get zapped. And he's sort of like, if definitely the the reference for my book series is the Fantastic Four, which, along with Spider-Man, was my favorite comic growing up. And so he is essentially the thing. It's clobbering time. <laughs> so, and Mo is this scrawny little kid, and he gets zapped with radiation, and suddenly he finds that he is just enormously strong. But he's also kind and tender-hearted, so he's not. A, he doesn't turn into a goon. He just turns into a, someone who's really you don't want to mess with on the ice. You don't want to grapple with him in the corners. So that's that is fantastic. Okay. I'm having a blast writing it. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so just letting you know, we're um, past 11:30. 11:30. So how about just a couple more minutes? Awesome, yeah. And is, I am is there something to we catch up on all the you know what? I'm gonna focus the camera on yours. How could I do that? Like this? 
Yeah, I'm going to focus the camera on your drawing right now while I browse comments. Okay. Um, so I'll keep drawing. Oh, and you know what I'll do is in the in the first book, they battle ice squids. So I will draw. Whoops. I will draw Mo. I didn't mean to get rid of that. I will draw Mo battling ice squids. And I am having fun experimenting with the eCam cover. So I'm going to move your cover so people can see. And get right now as you're drawing. Um, I'm I'm using eCam Live, which I just subscribed to recently, and oh, this is fascinating. This is cool. I'm glad you're. I'm glad this is helping you work stuff out too. Like like, it's amazing to me. It's so much fun to watch someone play with technology. This is so I've been funny. watching a lot of your Facebook lives and and experiments because I learn from them too. I love watching other. Look at this, what you're doing. So you're using. Oh. <laughs> I love that. That is so great. It's one of my goals for the future is to. I, I appreciate you. T I, I want to be able to make art with you some more this way and also invite other of our Kidlet Illustrator friends because, in theory, it would be cool to have um, us all all drawing together for um, young creators and maybe young creators can be asking questions or making art on their own and after oh. this um, later this afternoon I'm gonna check comments to see if anyone has been working on their own art and if they posted anything I love what you're that doing Kevin. awesome thank you <laughs> Just okay. goofing around. so I'm gonna wrap things up now um, y y y you keep making art this is great um, <laughs> so Thank you to everyone who um, is watching right now. Please feel free to um, post comments about if what you thought in terms of could we improve our audio or um, actually it's all for me because I'm the tech person. I probably um, messed some things up. Anyway, if, if one of us is louder than the other, I, I, Caitlin, can you let me know if you can hear me more clearly now? and if everything's working for you, what we could improve in the future. Because one of my Definitely. goals is to have more illustrators on um, with me. And I want to have Kevin back because he's just fun to hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> back so, at you. Back okay, at great. You. So I'm going to end up. If you want to find out more about Kevin Sylvester, um, what is your URL, Kevin Sylvester Online? Uh, KevinSylvesterBooks.com. Kevin Sylvester. And please check out all his books, including the one whose cover you can see gargantua jr defender of earth thanks very much okay I'm oh debbie that was a blast thanks for having me all right bye-bye everybody